Hello everyone, John here, and there's something that I just really wanted to show off because it's super, super cool. This is The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX HD, a native PC port of Link's Awakening done from the ground up. And there's so many cool things in here. So let's just start the game a second. First off, more slot file select screens, that's always cool. And your name can be linked by default, also cool. But look at this, right off the bat. Um, you can see there's four item slots. You can see that there's a subtle lighting to interiors that isn't usually in the Game Boy game. And of course, text uh, doesn't overlap with the display anymore and is much faster, which is awesome. But as we step outside, you'll see something even cooler. Whoa! Look at that! We've got this super uh, wide field of view in 16x9 with no screen transitions. And what's wilder than this is you can increase how far zoomed out the camera is. So we can go from super close, like this, which looks really nice, like seeing the artwork pop like this is so sharp. And you can see just how they've redone everything from scratch, which is beautiful. Uh, but what's cooler than that is going so far out that you can see everything at once. And what's wild is you can still quite easily read the game like this, or at least I can from this, this view. Um, Link's Awakening has really readable art and assets, so let's try and make our way down to the beach. Let's, let's get the sword, uh, from <laughs> this, uh, viewpoint. I'm just bumping into a Octorok over there. Here we go, we're on the beach right now. And, uh, let's zoom back in just so we can see what we're doing a bit easier. But yeah, we went all the way from the town to the beach from <laughs> that view. And there we go. And you can see how they've redone a lot of stuff. It's way smoother. A lot of the animations are much, much smoother. But also, on Game Boy, they wouldn't have accounted for, you know, this perspective. So they've had to redo where enemies come from, how far they, they move, and everything like that. And there's also just a, a slight effect on everything. Everything has, like, a small shadow. Like, if you look at this guy, there's a small shadow just under him. And we'll see a lot more of that in interiors, where lighting actually comes into play. Um, but it's, it's super subtle. And it, but it maintains the original look while kind of modernizing and sharpening everything. And I think it's awesome. But I really want to see what dungeons look like. Because the Switch version of Link's Awakening, the remake, had this sort of free-flowing camera as well. But dungeons were still um, locked. Because that's just kind of how they were designed to be. I want to see how this looks. That's a nice animation. Oh, look at that! Look at every, how everything's just sort of uh, dank and dark. It's very cool. Alright, back up we go. And into the forest. Look at this transition. I think so far the only tell that is working with boundaries that aren't usually there is the water. Like, you, you've just got this this very bold blue on the left with no um, sort of transition between the waves and the ocean. I think that's really the only tell. Otherwise, it looks awesome. Now let's go see that raccoon fella. There's like a small little screen shake when Link gets hit as well. Look at that! Just really feeling the impact. Hey, buddy. Are we friends? I feel like we're friends. Oh, we're not friends. I like how they redo that. Just like a fade to white. Because usually, you know, the game would have a locked camera. So having um, an actual transition to make it still work with this um, kind of view is awesome. There really is like a more, a more of a snappy feeling to combat. Does that happen every time like the original? No! It's just once! Look at that! I can touch this rock as much as I want, and it won't tell me that it's too heavy. What a bold new era we're in. Oh, you know what? I'm actually very curious to see how the lighting works in the witch's shop. Oh, we need to get the mushroom first. Because uh, she has a uh, lantern in there that you can light. So I'm very curious how that looks. Because so far we've seen like, like this. There's like a light emanating from the crystals. Like if I hit this. Yeah, it changes how the lighting looks. That's so cool. So yeah, I'm very curious how lamps look. And we'll see that in a moment with the witch. But let's get the mushroom first as an ingredient, which also has a shadow. The, um, the whole inventory system. Like right now we have three items, which wouldn't be the case in, uh, the original Link's Awakening. Have I done this right? Yeah, I have. Um, 
But like in the late game of Link's Awakening, they kind of expect you to change your items with like every screen scroll. And it does get tiring. And I think that's that's really one of the biggest um, failures of Link's Awakening. Is it like it's it's not really designed around the Game Boy's button limitations, despite being a Game Boy game. Um, let's go heal ourselves. It looks like they don't follow you out of the screens. Like they're still sort of designed just to work within their usual boundaries. But yeah, like in the late game, they want you switching between the Pegasus boots and Rock's feather and your sword, and like you're you're pausing all the time to do that. And this, like, just having having four items is really all you need. Like, as long as you can equip the Pegasus boots, Rock's feather, and your sword, then you're fine. Because then you just need like whatever contextual item for that dungeon at the time, and that's that's four taken up. All right, now I, I, I really want to see how this looks. Let's, let's have a look. So we've got a super dark room. And then we're going to turn this lantern on in a second. Look at that! Look at that flame! Beautiful. Hello. Okay. So now we can go and save the raccoon and then go see how dungeons work. Man, look how rad this is. And it's like a bit of grass? Is that is that usually how it is? I, I'm pretty sure it's not, but there's some grass just sort of surrounding the heart piece over there. I'm pretty sure it doesn't usually do that. Oh, we're powerful! Wahaha. <laughs> no, no, we're powerful! I should be careful, like, we're nearly dead. <laughs> My reign of power won't last long. I swear I don't usually take this much damage in Link's Awakening. I think I'm just feeling confident because we can see more. It's a foolish confidence. Hey, buddy. Let's save you. He's, like, he's bouncing off nothing because usually... Usually the screen would end there. Alright, let's go get us the key. I don't like getting those triangles and being powerful because it takes the nice music away. I'm pretty sure the soundtrack is exactly as it was originally. Which is interesting. Because um, it seems like the visuals, while very loyal, have been redone. Like when zooming in, it, it looks like it's a much higher detail than the actual sprites ever were. Despite looking the exact same. So I'm curious if the music's also been redone. Just to sound the same. <laughs> Alright, to the dungeon, fellas! I want to see how this screen shake looks. There's like a mild screen shake when you get hit. Which I like. Let's see how this one looks. Oh, I like that. That's much nicer than what Game Boy had. I like the gate coming up too. Oh, look, it's also a uh, free roaming camera. Let's see. What does the dungeon look like? Fully scaled. Oh, man. <laughs> That's cool. So, is there a way to lock the camera? Like, this frame rate lock. Smooth camera. I'm not sure what the difference is between that, but it doesn't lock the camera. What about controls? No. Game. There's an autosave, which is nice. But I don't think there's a way to lock the camera. Oh, well. We'll lock the frame rate. Which I think was unlocked up until now. Whoops. Let's get us a key. Get out of here. Oh. Oh, no. Well, that's what death looks like. It's a very quick... um call to action to get back into the game though which is nice oh I like that effect usually you don't quite see it from that angle like, you never really see two uh, closed doors at the same time looks nice though all right let's go get rocks feather the most important item in the game Thank you. Thank you! Oh, look at th the next room. I'll we'll show you in a second once I hit these bats. But, like, look at this. Everything is emitting a small light. Like, the um, enemy circling the chest right now has a light. The crystals have a light. That's so cool. 
I need to be careful with my health. Because I am going to get hit by the next enemies. These guys. They always hit me. Alright. I should have been patient there. I just said that I'll probably get hit and I just ran past them like it was nothing. No, no, we're okay. We're okay. Okay, just got to push this fella. We're good. Alright, let's go get our feather. Oh, I like how this looks too. Look at those flames. I I'm so impressed by the lighting. I wasn't really expecting it to look quite this good. You know, I was expecting just Link's Awakening in widescreen, but there's so many cool little adjustments that I love. Alright. And there we go. We got four item slots used up. That's okay. That's okay. It's probably for the better that we do that anyway. Because now it's quicker to get through all these bits. Do we have a key? I don't think we have a key. There we go. Now we got a key. Hey, buddy. Thank you. We might, we actually, we might have a key. I can't remember. We'll see. Yeah, it turns out we do have a key. Okay. Why do I keep dying? Oh, look at that. It never happened. I will say, with, with the screen not locked, this fight doesn't quite have its edge. Like, just seeing... Everything else in the surrounding rooms. It does take away the focus from this fight a little bit. There must be a way to lock the screen, right? There must be. Am I just missing something? I think I may be. Yeah. Ah, well. It's not a big deal. Alright, boss time! Hey, pal. Are we friends? I feel like we could be friends. Not today. Well, there we go. That is the first dungeon in Link's Awakening DX HD. What a damn cool project. Like, we've seen plenty of Zelda ports of, like, the N64 games, but this, I think, is cooler than them. Because it's not just making the game smoother, it's enhancing it in so many ways. The Game Boy game I love, but it is, it's deeply flawed from a gameplay perspective with the item switching. And um, just, you know, g getting rid of its limitations and just allowing it to breathe. When, when, when I say breathe, I mean like, breathe! Uh, it's absolutely wild. Let's uh, see what the setting before this looks like. Like a scale one. Man, that's that's quite playable. You gotta find, I gotta find where I am first. There I am. Like, this is, this is actually quite playable. Hey, Ali. Where does he fly from? Like, watch where he flies out from. Where does he stop? Does he fly? Oh, no, okay, he fades out. <laughs> I was going to say, does he fly across the entire map? Man, this is wild. Yeah, I'm a fan. Anyway, thank you for watching my little exploration of this project. I think it's absolutely wild. I want to see how far their uh, little shooty things go for. Oh, they stop there. Okay. But yeah, I think this is wild. I adore it. Um, and just what a cool thing. Anyway, let's wrap this up. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this, check it out yourself. And I will see you next time. Bye, everyone.